All right, so let's jump into Houdini and get the area HDA in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow uh, level designers to lay out an area inside of Unity uh, using a curve. Okay, so let's go and build this out. All right, so uh, let's start our area HDA. And I'm actually going to pull these guys. I'm going to reorganize these guys a little bit uh, because this is basically our core system right here. All right, so let's just start uh, kind of bundling these up. So this is the core system right here. So I'm going to say core system. All right, this is, this is like our pipeline. And these are basically, actually, I'll pull that guy out of there one second. And these guys are basically, you know, our individual little processes that we're laying out. These are more of like our utilities, and these are all the individual modules that sit inside of our top network system here. Okay, so that's why I'm going to put those guys in there. And these guys basically are the components. So I'm just going to do a shift O, and this is going to be our components. All right, cool. So uh, inside of our components over here, let's go and actually create another uh, geometry node here. And what I'm going to do is just call this the IP area area generator. There we go. All right, cool. And let's just make this a little bigger. There we go. All right, so what we want to do is I want to jump inside and just first create a curve like so. I'm going to come into the scene view over here and hit uh, spacebar two on the keyboard. And what I want to do is just give the level designers a starting area. So I'm going to make this something like 10 by 10 meters. All right, about 30 feet. All right, so uh, with our curve node selected, I'm going to come over here and hit enter on the keyboard and turn on my grid snapping. That way I can just draw out a nice square. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to then, uh, I'm going to close this here and go back into my perspective view. What we're going to do now is drop down a resample node and I'm just going to resample this. And I'm going to put it to something like four. All right, let's do two. That'll be fine for now. And what I want to do is uh, set this to our subdivision curves. There we go. We get more of like a, a circle. Cool. All right. So it'll just basically pop up with this particular curve in place. So the level designer doesn't have to actually create one themselves. All right. It's, so this is just going to be the, the default curve. Now you can always allow the, the level designer to insert their own curve. So what we can do is we can do an object merge like this. And we'll call this the the user curve, like so. And then you would drop down a switch node. And inside of the switch node, what we can do is we can detect if there's actually some sort of input being put into this particular object merge. So uh, to do that, what we would put inside of the switch node is say endpoints, like so. And we just want to look at input one. So if input one, all right, so this is zero and this is one. So if the number of points in input one is greater than zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the user curve and not the default curve. But if it is zero, then we're going to use the default curve. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Cool. So in order for this particular curve to be available inside of the Houdini engine, uh, what we need to do is we need to turn this into a digital asset first. All right, so I'm going to rename this here. Then we got to put it in that proper folder, into our project folder. Okay, and let's go and hit this guy and then select job and I'm going to put it into the HDA folder here and this is going to be our area generator. Perfect. All right. Cool. We don't need any of those spare parameters. And what we want to do in order to get that curve to show up is we need to come into our node tab here inside of the type properties window. And I want to go and select that particular curve. So I just want to get the default curve. All right. And that right there makes it show up inside of the Houdini engine. Okay, so let's apply that and then go to our parameters tab here and let's just get rid of all this because we don't need to see it. Alrighty, cool. And that should be just about everything we need to do. Uh, one thing I do like to do, and this is completely, you know, aesthetic is I, I like to add a color to these. Uh, and then basically I expose this color because level designers like to basically associate or at least the ones I've been working with, that they like some sort of way to associate different types of areas. So color is a good way to do that, right? So we'll just call this our area color. 
Alrighty, and we want to come up here, and I'm going to just default this to something orange, like that, a little bit brighter, a little faded. Alright, cool. So it'll be orange uh, inside of the Houdini engine. You can even take this a step further and add a little bit of alpha to it. Now you'd probably need a custom material, but we'll see. So this will just be a custom alpha. And what I want to do is come up here and say at alpha, and the capital A is important, and we'll set it to 0.5. You can see over here in the viewport, we now can see through it. So just picking up that vertex alpha, basically. Okay. And then finally, I always like to plop down a null node here and just say out area. Very cool. And with that, uh, let's just do one more thing. Let's expose our color property. All right. And so I'm just going to take this and do a middle mouse alt click. There we go. And you can always expose the alpha too. Uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it there for now. Cool. All right. So we'll just hit apply and accept and we'll save this like so. And that is that. So now we have our area generator. We can change color on this uh, to whatever we want. All right. And let's just go back to that previous color there. There we go. And there we go. So in the next uh, video, what we're going to do is we are going to get this inside of Unity and test it out, see if we need any other particular data. Thanks so much.